every time you think Star Wars can't get worse, uh, you see the people involved. Uh, these are evil people, uh, and they, they hate Star Wars. Uh, they hate the fans. Uh, they hate everything in their lives, and, and they want to make you miserable because they're miserable in their degenerate lifestyles. That's, that, that is the entire purpose of what they're doing. Now, they, they don't know the overall thing. They, what's coming down from the executives is they're being controlled for uh, this weird DEI agenda, which at the end of the day is, is a, uh, a, a deal which is meant to depopulate uh, the globe. And that's 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 what uh, the higher ups want. So they're really just, uh, as the communists call them, useful idiots. Uh, and that's what Leslie Headland is. And this is a useful idiot kind of day with the acolyte now being out. Uh, we're going to see exactly <laughs> what she said. This being the gayest Star Wars and uh, and her weird claim about R two D two, who's a robot, so it makes no sense. Uh, and uh, oh gosh, it's so bad. Uh, and we'll get into the reactions of that in just a moment as well. My name is John Delarose. I'm a number one best-selling science fiction author. I wrote a series that is a way better uh, replacement for modern Star Wars than anything any of these guys have come out with. If you like the old extended universe, the Timothy Zahn stuff, you're going to love Justified Saga of the Nano Templar. I have a beautiful trilogy here uh, about a space crusade, which is awesome. Uh, if you like Warhammer 40K, any of this stuff, you're going to absolutely enjoy this. Go check that out. I'll put it in the description below. And make sure to subscribe to the channel and join our community here. Really appreciate everybody who's around and supporting us. Uh, you are awesome. And these are the type of fans that I do want. I don't want these modern audiences that these uh, folk are trying to look for. I want you uh, because you're the smart people who actually enjoyed good content. And that's what we want to celebrate here. So uh, Leslie Headland, who I, I will remind you once again, is uh, once again, I must remind you, she was Harvey Weinstein's assistant. Uh, and now she's being promoted uh, to run a Star Wars show under Kathleen Kennedy. Very weird. I, I don't know what's going on. I don't know what the casting couch is like there. Uh, but you can only imagine how crazy it is. So uh, here's our Pride Month uh, <laughs> cringe coming out of this. I, th I thought Call of Duty was bad. Uh, we're happy to report that the Acolyte is arguably the gayest Star Wars yet. Happy Pride Month. <laughs> Look at them giggling and smugly looking at you going, we're ruining this and we know it. That's exactly what those faces communicate. We know that we've made a, a crap uh, iteration of Star Wars. We know that it's going to piss the fans off and we do not care whatsoever uh, because we are protected. And look at how she's touching the star uh, as well. I mean, you know, if, if a man director who was a straight white male touched a black woman star like this uh you know there'd be a sexual harassment lawsuit uh, you know it happened she's protected because she's a lesbian let's be honest so this is what's happening here uh, uh actress amanda sternberg chimed in sa saying nerds are gay <laughs> well cool i didn't want to be a nerd anyway <laughs> some nerds are not gay and they're very threatened by gay stuff oh my gosh this is this is uh their their press tour again well, that's true. But in my world, nerds are gay. Well, uh, <laughs> that's all that's going to be left. And, you know, since they're pandering to only like 3% of the population, they're going to get 3% of the Star Wars audience. Uh, it, it's tracking, actually, if you think about it. And uh, asked if this was uh, the fun element. She responded, no, I don't think so. Yet people told me it's the gayest Star Wars, and frankly, I am into it. Of course she's into it. This is her whole lifestyle. That's what they're presenting on screen in this entire deal. Uh, <laughs> I think Star Wars is so gay already, says Amanda Sternberg. Berg, huh? I just noticed this. I wonder... I, I'm not going to notice that on YouTube. Never mind. Uh, let's uh, let's ignore that. Uh, don't mention anything in the comments. If, if you noticed, don't notice. Don't notice. We have to be a safe space here. I mean, if you have seen the fits... We'd like, look how gay this is and send each other a reference photo. Wow. And here we go. Headland then said, are you telling me with a straight face that CP3PO is straight? He's a robot. Uh, and uh, robots uh, uh, clearly don't have any sexual drive whatsoever. Ashley Headland, Leslie Headland, whatever your name is. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. Uh, what's going on with this? Uh, and uh, this is uh, this is uh, where it goes. They're a couple, says uh, says uh, this lady about the freaking robots, which were comic relief robots, which were pals in the Star Wars. And they have to they have to turn everything sexual. It's so sick. These people are sick. They're sick. 
I think I, I think it's canon that R two D two is a lesbian. Now that's interesting here again. Like everybody's a lesbian. Every you know the Force is female. There's a rumor that they're going to turn the Force into some female, whatever thing. The the gay robots uh, are are female. How did R two D two become a female? It's a, it's a robot. It's an it. It's not a th- oh god. I hate having to argue. It's like I feel stupid. If you talk to a normal person in the street about this stuff and be like, oh my god, they're they're talking about robots and Star Wars being gay and, and, and assigning them genders at this point, and it's so freaking maddening. You know, a normal person would be like, are you crazy? Why why are people talking about this? Like, what why does this exist? Oh, and it's because of these sick people in charge of this stuff right now. Now, how is this reaction going uh, after this? Because, of course, as Leslie Headland was chosen uh, for this role, for this whole deal. Uh, that's the entire time. Like, she, her whole point here is to rewrite star wars uh to be this like black lesbian fest i'm not going to call it diversity because I, I actually pointed this out on twitter this morning uh if you don't follow me on twitter i think i'm kind of funny maybe i maybe i'm not uh but but i think i am uh i pointed out on twitter that diversity only has one color and i've noticed this this morning uh uh again i'm, I'm noticing too much you're not supposed to notice uh but i noticed that if you look at it uh diversity why does it look exactly the same why uh, Star Wars looks exactly like Star Trek, exactly like Doctor Who. They're all exactly, they're all queer black. That's not diverse at all. It's it's the opposite diverse. It's monocolor, monochrome, monoculture. Uh, there's no diversity whatsoever. And in fact, if you look at Discovery, it, it looks like the same bleak, like dirty science fiction, generic Star Wars thing. Uh, in all on all the planets that Star Wars is like, I mean, they they don't even have like the sets differentiate from one another uh it's really weird diversity has made everything into this monolith of shit sorry for swearing but i'm getting i'm getting irritated at the r2d2 lesbian thing it's exactly what happened so uh what do the fans think about this oh well here's our uh, <laughs> average tomato meter look at how the critics are all almost unanimous that this is just a great iteration of star it's amazing it's stunning and brave wow much wow <laughs> but then you go to the audience score, and it's, oh, it's a 45%. That's not good. Oh, no. Uh, what do all critics say? Oh, top critics are saying a little less, and the audience hates it. Um, I've got my review coming later uh, today, so make sure to come back to the channel for that because I, I did watch the first two episodes, and I'm going to do my full review. Um, 45%, not good. And from what I've, I've heard from Chris Gore at over at Film Threat, who actually tells the truth on these sorts of things, uh, Episode three is where it really goes off the rails with the diversity stuff. And so they, they kind of bait and switch you for two episodes, try to lull you into a sense of complacency. That's their new way of doing things. And then the third episode, they push the agenda. And that's what's going to happen here. Now, they're already re- accusing it of review bombing. So, uh, yeah, this is uh, this is one of the shills in the media who likes it. They say, I will have a lot to say in my review that drops tomorrow, but the Acolyte is legitimately so good badass Star Wars action, the kind of story I've been craving for roughly 25 years, and I love this cast so much. If you look, uh, this is the lead news editor at Collider. So this is an access media person. If you looked at what Collider did with Doctor Who, they gave this whole interview celebrating queerness as well. Uh, They're here to just promote Disney. So any review they give is going to be completely biased because this person's on Disney's payroll. That's what it comes down to. Maggie, love it fake reviews now at the same time they're all going through there and saying that uh it's review bombers uh these people are so silly uh, what do we got here this is a uh, uh a fangirl first oh joy she looks like a lesbian uh love the acolyte not without some bumps yeah okay well i'll, t- I'll get into the bumps in my review feels like a good jedi procedural oh good oh good smart going somewhere connections to the prequel original and sequel trilogies wow those that doubted Leslie Headland's knowledge made a serious mistake. Ah, here's a he him. What a delight! Now, uh, master of the TDS uh, already did discover that there are bots in force going on Twitter, pretending like this is a success. Uh, we'll we'll watch this as it develops. As more people watch it, we'll see what the audience score ends up being. I think once episode three comes out, it's going to drop again drastically. Uh, and then we'll look at the uh, the, the numbers on uh, how many people are actually watching this. I bet it's not enough for their 
plus million dollar budget for these eight episodes uh, to actually work very well. Because that's a lot of money. You need a lot of new subscribers. You need a lot of watch hours to make that kind of film worth it. As we found out with Secret Invasion, which which failed as well in the same vein. So ugh, these people are completely insufferable. They really are. Uh, it's it's really difficult. And, uh, you know, I don't know who actually supports them at this point. Leave a comment down below with what you think about this. Hit the like and subscribe button. Make sure to check out Justified Saga of the Nano Templar on Amazon. Really appreciate you guys picking up the books. It's been awesome. We'll be back soon.